Hey up everybody, how's it going? I hope the study is going well. Now I'm here for three important reasons. Firstly, I'm here to save you time. Secondly, I'm here to make studying easier. And thirdly, I'm here to give you that uplift in the marks and get rid of those errors. Thanks for landing on the channel and thanks for clicking on this video. If you've not been here before, welcome. My name is Professor Mark Egan and I specialise in teaching and learning at the University of York. Importantly today, we're going to be focusing on something called Google Scholar, not just giving a broad overview, but we're going to be drilling down and I'm going to be giving you my hints, tips and cheats that I've gathered together as a professor over the years. These are really going to benefit your scholarship and your learning and make those essay writing and dissertations much easier to do. If you're here for this video today, I also recommend that you look at these videos here. They're going to go through some other techniques of Google Scholar, give an introduction and also some little secret source that I've got, which if you go to these videos here, they're also going to give a background of referencing, how to reference the basic, but also some key strategies which are going to improve your levels of scholarship. You don't just like land on this channel, watch one video and go. If you're really serious and you really want to improve your marks, you've got to watch a few of them. And the more you watch, the more you'll see your marks improve because the more knowledge is like building blocks which slot together. They're all interconnected. If you want to get the insight of a professor, of my knowledge, from my perspective, and genuinely have a concern for doing this properly and becoming a good student and scholar, then I implore you to watch as many as you can. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and join the movement. Okay, so let's jump straight in there. So tip number one is using the cited by and the related articles. So when we're doing research, it's not just to go at it randomly and just start putting keywords in. We have to think about research like a trail, that one article can lead on to another. All the articles in something that we're researching are having a conversation together. And therefore, if we can use a tool which will restrict to those articles which are connecting, this is going to be really useful. Now, if we begin at this initial Google Scholar screen, the chances are that you might have a key article that was given to you by your professor or might have come from the lecture slides. So if we started off with an essential article, this example I've got here is one on identity work in organizations. So I've I pressed enter there and this has brought up the article which can be accessed if I click on it. But the key thing for this is we want to look at the cited by there. It's been cited by 507 academics and also this related articles tab. Now if we click on cited by, this will give us a list of all of the academics, all the professors, who've, scholars who've cited this particular article. So we know that they're going to have a connection and a link to this initial key article that we've got. Now, part of the skill is in your judgment as you go down to try and understand the relationship of these articles. If we think about how paragraphs are constructed, really you'll have a particular idea that you want to express in the article. So maybe you're looking for something in particular. Perhaps it's something, if we zoomed in on this one here, about liminality and identity construction. And therefore we might want to click onto that article and forge a relationship with that source and the initial key source that we've got. If we go back, if we clicked on the related articles there, as we go down, this will show us all articles which are related. And this is the Google indexing itself that has made that arbitrary decision about the relatedness of these articles. So as we can see, all of these concern the similar theme of identity at work and in organizations. So we could start to click on them and look at them and draw relationships. Initially, we might want to check on a particular abstract or something. So I've just clicked on one here, and this might give us a more deeper understanding about how it might relate to the key article that we started our search with. So tip number two is to look at the authors. Now this is a really useful feature, and what Google Scholar allows you to do is to click on and have a look at the profile of individual professors and academics. Now why might this be useful? They might have contributed many articles over a number of years. And if you're researching a particular topic or idea or theme, then is every chance that this person you're looking at in a key article has written many others. And this is probably the most immediate way that you can gain access and start to see this. 
Sometimes as well, a, a professor and a scholar is having conversations with themselves when they write an article. They're reflecting back on past papers they've written. There might be extensions of thought that they've done over a number of years. So again, if you can latch onto this, if you can connect with it, it helps you get a, a greater sense of the literature in the field and will help your essay writing and your dissertation. Okay, so now on to tip number three, and this is gonna focus on use of the H-index and also metrics. What the H-index is, is a measurement of the cumulative impact that a scholar, a professor has had over a number of years. It's really looking at the merits and the worth of their papers. Now this is obviously useful when we're, we're putting together our assignments and our dissertations because we want to know that the people that we're citing are important contributors to the field. It's important also to know that this doesn't necessarily address the actual brilliance or how good a paper is. If a professor has been publishing over a number of years, they might have a very high H index. But a more recent scholar might have published an amazing paper which is really useful for you. They might have a low H index. H index doesn't count for everything and we've got to judge the paper on its own merits sometimes. The other important feature that we've got is metrics in Google Scholar. Now what the metrics allow us to do is to access more general information about looking at journals which might have been published. So if we're trying to look at a particular field, what the metrics will do is narrow that focus down into particular disciplines. So if you were researching the field of engineering, it would allow you to go into and look at, examine some of the, the most impactful and important journals in the field of engineering. So this is what it really does. Okay, so let's get involved in tip number four, and this is called the citation alert. Now the citation alert is useful in two particular ways. If we're concentrating on a particular author, if we click on the citation alert, what it can potentially do is give us an announcement when that author has published another paper. There's also a second function which the citation alert does. Perhaps there might be a key paper which is integral to our essay or dissertation. And therefore what the citation alert will do is if another paper, another author, somebody in the field cites this key paper, it will be flagged up and alerted to us. So why is this good? Importantly then, it can provide a really useful function if we're doing any extended form of work. Also as well, sometimes I think we've got to play the long game and we have to think that we're at university for a number of years. And so in the early stages of our university life, if we start to find key papers or start to become familiar with key authors, then I think it's really useful if we keep up to date with new publications and new citations. Additionally as well, what if we're doing a long piece of work? What if we're doing our PhD and this is a piece of work which is going on over three to four years? What the citation alert does then, it allows us to be informed when there's a new contribution, when either the key author's published or the article's been cited. And therefore immediately we can go back and change our literature review. We can show how it's been cited, where it's been cited, and maybe there's been a progression and a new dialogue and a new extension of thought which we can then put into our own work. Now tip number five, this is to create a Google Scholar profile. Why a profile might be useful is it makes you discoverable. Now you don't need to be a published author to have a profile. If you're a student at any level, I think by having a profile allows you to put your details in there, you can add a photograph and it just makes you existent in the Google Scholar realm. We can all harbour ambitions of publishing. In later videos, I'm gonna show you ways, even as a student, you can aim to get your research published. On to tip number six. This is how you copy citations from Google Scholar for your reference list. Now, I thought this was so useful that I actually created a specific video that goes through this in detail. I think it's an absolute bomb of a tip that can really help students. So I really recommend that you go to the video here. And the reason why it's so useful, this tip, is that it can really help eradicate the mistakes that we see in reference lists. This is when we have to cite a piece of work in text, and then we have to find the exact formatting reference style which then we have to put in a list at the end. And this is where I look at student works, I see so many little mistakes in terms of punctuation, uh, whether it's in italics, spacing, it's so easy. 
And one of the reasons why it's easy to make mistakes is that we get taught by our universities to almost write these out individually. It becomes a really laborious, uh, takes ages, uh, and it's a real fidgety and difficult thing to do to get it correct. Also, we have to do it very often when we're tired at the end. So this is a really important thing which I think can just get rid of all of those problems. Ultimately, what Google Scholar will do in the citation link, it will offer you the correct form of cited work. Now I'm gonna talk through how you find that and how you go through the business of copying this over onto your reference list. We are once more on the Google Scholar landing page. We've typed in charismatic leadership, and as we go down, we're gonna go down to the fourth article here, and we're gonna presume that this article has become part of the assignment, and it's embedded in one of the paragraphs, and there's an in-text citation of it. At this stage, at the finishing of the assignment, we'd be wanting to place this into the reference list. Now, rather than having to laboriously type all the details of this out, this technique is gonna show you how you're guaranteed to get the form right, and save time by doing it. So if we click on the link here, the side button, click on this, this will take us through then to five different options of different referencing styles. Now you should know through your department which one you have to adhere to. In this case, we're gonna copy and paste Harvard. And then we're gonna move it over onto our document reference list. And what we'll merely be doing is just copy and pasting it. And now we know that we have the exactitude of the precise, correct citation. So we're not gonna be losing marks for erroneous mistakes and getting these references wrong. Very simple technique to guarantee that things are perfect. Now tip number seven is about how we're able to use reference management tools. So while we're using Google Scholar, what it can facilitate is it will transfer the reference over to the reference management tool which we might be using. Why might this be useful? Getting good marks is about organization. We think about how many sources we're, we're looking at that, and, and we might be collecting and correlating. How we keep track of those, how we gather them and how we put them in order is really important. Now Google Scholar does this for us in various ways, but it might be the fact that we have our own preferences to reference, and therefore there's different reference management tools on the market which we might use and might be recommended by our department or university. But the important thing I wanna say for this tip is that Google Scholar does facilitate and allow you to transfer over the link from Google Scholar into your own private use of your reference management system. Right, and this is another absolute gem which I think can really help you with your scholarship. What it ultimately does, it helps you use the library and labels function on Google Scholar to form our own private database, collecting and storing all the articles which we might come across and might want to use for our work. This is really useful because very often, I myself, it's been a bit of a scattergun approach where I have files with PDFs in and documents and it's using up storage space on my laptop. What Google Scholar Library does then, it allows us a home stored there on Google Scholar that we can go to and it helps the organization. Mm. Sipping my tea. And what it does as well, it allows us to provide labels to the library. So here on the Google Scholar screen, I've put in leadership, and this is brought up a series of books and articles. Now going down, perhaps these are of interest and I might want to save them. So I would click the save button and I've set up a label within my library here and I will click leadership done. As I went down, perhaps the next one again, I'd like to save that. So I click on leadership and done. And I could go down all the ones I think I might want to store within my library. I'm going to save this one as well. There we go. Now I want to show you where these are stored in the library section. So if we go onto the menu bar, we click that, go down to my library. We will now see then that these have been saved to this library section and they are within the label of leadership. Now perhaps I might want to create another label. So perhaps I want to research charismatic leadership. And again here, these have been brought up through the, the search and I'm gonna save them. So I'm gonna set up a separate label this time. So I'm gonna create a new one and call it charismatic Charismatic, done. And as I go through, I can start saving these up in this separate label in my library. So I'm gonna save that one to Charismatic, done. And as I go down, perhaps this one here is gonna be an important article. I'm saving it into Charismatic, done. And let's have a look at those. So we go back up to the library tab in the menu bar, come down to my library. 
And as we can see here on the left, we've got all articles. We've got one for charismatic leadership and leadership. If we click on charismatic, here are the three articles that I've saved and I've got immediate access to, and they're gonna be permanently stored within my library part of Google Scholar. It's not just playing the game of this piece of word that you're writing on and storing them then that you can access, but maybe playing the long game thinking about how you might be studying for two, three, four, five years. Build up your own personal library with all of these articles. An example of this is perhaps that I teach students at different years. I teach students in a module in year one and also in year two. And very often there's crossover. There might be material that can be drawn upon for an assignment that they learnt in year one. Maybe they could have stored those articles that they used in the first year and have them kept on Google Scholar if it's under a key topic or theme. And then they can just go back and they're easily found and accessible. They're there waiting to be discovered again. This cuts out all the problems of saving, of storing, of finding again, of losing links. It's all there correlated and collected for you. This is gonna focus on fields of research, in particular using advanced researches and filtering the searches that we apply. This is really important when we're students and when we're scholars, because when we're about the business of finding articles, the more that we can focus and narrow, the more easy it is to find the key and essential things that we're looking for. Now there's ways that Google Scholar will allow you to filter the search. There's three that I can think of that are really important. This is in terms of the author, the location, and also the years. So perhaps there's a certain article that you're looking at. Maybe you want to look at more contemporary literature. So a particular study that you're looking at in terms of studies on social identity. And therefore you only want to look at literature between 2018 and 2021. You're able to do this using the filtered search. There's many ways then that you can apply these different filters into your searching, which will give you that more refined answers that you're looking for and the articles which are gonna really make a difference to your writing. If you go to these videos here, I'm gonna talk more about referencing, in particular referencing strategies and how to alleviate and get rid of those referencing mistakes. I wanna just recommend that you subscribe to the channel and also you press the like button. The more of that and the busier that that is getting going on, the more material is gonna get released. Importantly, I'm gonna be releasing videos every week, so please stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.